here we are again. In the movie Groundhog Day, Bill Murray's character is trapped, stuck, forced to relive the same day, day after day, one day at a time. Sound familiar? Last Sunday, Andy Bevan reminded us, inspired us about the work of International Justice Mission, who strive tirelessly to free and to rehabilitate children and adults who are not just a little bored by the lockdown routine, but are trapped in modern day slavery. The story that we've been wrestling with in a book called Genesis started with a song about events unfolding, unfolding one day at a time. This book of Genesis now ends with a family story and it's not a happy family story. A man called Joseph is second in command in the Egyptian Empire. His brothers, the same brothers who had him sold into slavery um, and only just stopped themselves attempting to kill him, have now come for food and for help. Joseph spent years in slavery, he spent years in prison, before he eventually became the second in command in the Egyptian empire and could be who he was made to be, being a blessing, feeding the whole of the known world, including his brother, brothers and his father. Since then, his father Jacob, or Israel as he's known, has died and despite there having been a bit of a reconciliation, his brothers now fall into two things, fear and guilt. Despite the fact that Joseph has wept before them, has fed them, they, they can't seem to escape their own version of Groundhog Day. Despite their being the ones who sold Joseph into slavery, all through their story, it's been them who have been trapped in this cycle, it seems, of guilt and regret. The fear and the guilt now boil back to the surface and they start to expect the worst when they go to see their brother again. So they throw themselves at Joseph's feet. Joseph's response is a surprise. What they might expect is revenge or, or punishment. That would be exactly the kind of thing the Egyptian empire would promote. But Joseph, it seems, has learned to be different. What Joseph says to them is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid is one of the most repeated commands in the whole of Scripture. It said to Abraham right at the start of when he's called to become a family who will bring blessing to the world. Do not be afraid is what angels say as they announce Jesus' birth. Do not be afraid are the words that this young Jewish rabbi says to his followers as he appears to them after his resurrection. Joseph goes on to then talk about what his brothers intended for him and then what actually happened. He declares that his brothers wanted to harm him but despite that God was at work. This God refused to let their acts their choices get in the way of God's dream, God's vision, God's plan, God's project, which is the same plan, project, vision, dream as it's been from that very first song. This God is about, Joseph says, the saving of many lives, about providing for you and your children, about dealing with with your fears and your guilt, giving comfort, getting his project back on track, comfort and reassurance. Joseph's words sum up the whole of his story. 
since it began way back in chapter 37. And I'd argue, in many ways, Joseph's words here sum up the whole story of the book of Genesis. These poems and hymns and parables written down and collected to provide hope in the middle of chaos and crisis. Joseph is not ignoring what his brothers did. Joseph's not saying, thanks for selling me into slavery. Joseph states clearly, you intended to harm me. That was wrong. The brothers have sort of shown that they know that. That's why they've been trapped in this cycle of guilt and fear, suffering those consequences. This is no fairy story. This is real and true and messy. But at this point, Joseph breaks the cycle. Joseph resists the temptation of the empire's way. He doesn't bring judgment or punishment or revenge. That's the kind of thing the brothers expect. That's the kind of thing the empire around him might expect. But that's not the way of Joseph's God. Joseph knows who his God is and he knows who he is, what he was made to be. His God is a good God who intended good for his creation from the start and he made his human beings to be part of that. Joseph is made to bring a blessing, to save life, to provide for the people in front of him. Joseph's God, this God, my God, made human beings to join in, to be partners in this task. And this God's dream, this God's project to get things back on track has been relentless, moving forward one day at a time since the very beginning. It's been a real, a true, a gritty, a messy story of bad choices, of rebellion, of painful consequences, of brokenness. But despite all the odds, despite the obstacles, hope has always pointed towards the fact that nothing has ever stopped the dream, the plan, the project moving forward. God has been working God is working to put the pieces back together. Sometimes it seems with gold woven into the seams, making a work of art that's more precious and just as useful, but maybe with a story to tell in the scars. God wants his work of art, his creation, and his works of art, the human beings, to fulfil their purpose. To work together to bring life, love, care, nurture, blessing to the whole of creation. It's a story. It's a reality summed up nowhere more powerfully than in the life and in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. It's a story that moves me to action, to response, to ask myself, who is this God and who am I? That's why deep in my bones, like International Justice Mission, I believe that no one should be trapped in an endless cycle, unable to be who they were made to be. And so Genesis, the book, ends but the dream, the plan, the project, the vision continues. Will you join in?